call. Mm -hmm. mm. You hear me? Yeah. Mm. Lord. Huh. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Thank you, Lord. We're going to use a stock today. Taste and see. Taste. <laughs> Taste and see. Let us pray. God, thank you so much for your love for us. The way that you remind us in song and scripture and word and deed, God, we, we're grateful for the constant reminders that you give to us, that you love us. You love us in spite of our faults, our failures, how often we fall, um, our shortcomings. You still love us. Yes, God. Thank you, God, for loving us so much and for loving us unconditionally. And as we look in your word today and pull a page out of David's life and the experience that he has with you, um, help us to see you even in a greater light than we know you today. Stretch our thinking so that we would know you better today. Challenge us and encourage us. Help us to grow closer to you as we walk with you in this journey called life. God, I ask that you would forgive me of my sins, transgressions, my iniquities, and allow me to just be an instrument that you have at your disposal to have a conversation with us. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Taste and see. There are some some foods that that are probably best experienced by tasting them for yourself. <clears throat> no matter what others say, no matter how well someone may explain or expound upon or describe, there's some some foods that it's just better for you to taste them <laughs> yourself and, and make a determination yourself whether you believe it to be good or not. Mm. See, as, as humans, we are possessed. We, we, we are given the ability to detect five types of taste. They're sweet, they're sour, salty, bitter, and this, this taste called umami, which mm -hmm. is a savory Japanese type of flavor that's really distinct from, from other flavors. So, so we, we as people, we have this this ability to, to, to taste and, and, and to experience a variety of, of taste. And our, our individual sensitivities to taste, physicians say, are tied to our genetics. So, so, so there's some things that are genetic about some, some, some of our genetics influence um, our, our taste buds and what we deem um, to be tasty. However, there's, there's also environment and background that that can influence our, our classifying something as very good or something that, you know what, I really like this. Some of that is, is influenced by our environment and our background because, see, some of us prefer saltiness in some instances 
where there are others of us who, who do not like salt that, that much. So some of us will desire more sweetness while there are others of us who may not desire as much sweet tasting foods. For instance, some, some for the life of me, I don't know why they love salt and vinegar potato chips. <laughs> I, I, I mean, there, there are people who I know that can like crush a bag, the family bag. <laughs> of salt and vinegar potato chips and for the life of me that just sounds it and even when I've tasted one before I just didn't it didn't agree with my taste buds but yet there are those who 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 who, who love them because I think it's like this, for each of us, there's a different experience mm -hmm. for us with the, with the foods yeah. that we taste. Yeah. So, so, so some of us who are chocolate lovers mm -hmm. will, amen, will, mm -hmm. will, will, mm -hmm. will prefer chocolate on anything. You could put chocolate on broccoli, I'm going to eat it. <laughs> Because, because, well, I love broccoli too. Um, but, but there's just some, there's, there's this experience that we have with food and our own personal taste buds that, that is different for everyone else. However, there's, there's something going on right now with this Popeye's chicken sandwich. Mm -hmm. It, it is captivating the hearts and the minds and the taste buds of people from all walks of life. Yes. I mean, this thing is becoming phenomenal. It, it's, it's breaking racial barriers. <laughs> <laughs> and not only black folk are talking about this Popeye's chicken sandwich, but white people are talking about, have you tasted the Popeye's chicken sandwich? And it's, for the life of me, man, I scratch my head like this, this thing has pulled, it's, it's, it's taken on a form all its own where it has people. Have you seen the lines mm -hmm. of people? Maybe some of, some of us have stood in <laughs> lines. <laughs> I guess so. I mean, I, and I'm talking about like the lines where where y'all probably don't know anything about government cheese, but when yeah. when, when when you used to have to yeah, yeah I, I'm talking about those kinds of lengthy lines where they're wrapping around the Popeye's building yes. mm -hmm. because people want this sandwich. So much so until the other day I heard on the radio um, a, a gentleman on, on the Popeye's chicken sandwich made it on sports radio. No. Now, Popeye's and sports have nothing to do with one another. But yet, the, the, the hosts were talking about the sandwich and how they decided one day to just pull in because they heard all of this uproar. And they decided one day to pull in the Popeyes and order a sandwich, and they couldn't believe the line. There was to, to you know, to, to the way they told the story, there, there was a line <laughs> for regular Popeye stuff, but then there was a separate line for the chicken sandwich, where they are becoming, where, where, where they're becoming designated registers in Popeye's, strictly 
for if you want a chicken sandwich or not. There's, there's, this, there's this thing going, going on so much so until people are even in the media arguing about, well, is Popeye's chicken sandwich better than Chick-fil-A's chicken? We, we talk about a chicken sandwich. And with all of the news that's going on in, in the world, and even locally, there, there are segments that are, that are, are debating, there are segments in the media that are debating about which one is the better chicken sandwich. And people are declaring that there is something about this Popeye's chicken sandwich that has so many people captivated because what they are experiencing from eating it is causing them to share it and talk to others about it. And now all of a sudden, there's this chicken sandwich phenomenon taking place where people are even getting in fights. And I think somebody was even killed one day yes. in a Popeye's chicken sandwich line. Yes. Because this thing is just growing and it's and it's and, and it's taking people by storm because the experience that they're having with it. Well, 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 David has an experience that he wants to share with other people as well. It's not about a chicken sandwich, but he wants to share his experience with God, and he wants other people to have to be captured and captivated by this, this experience he has and wants to assure them that, look, if you just taste and see, All right, if you All just right. try it All for right. yourself, All right. If you just try him for yourself, there's an experience that you will have that 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 may be even better than my experience. He he he. So so he says to them, I, I want you to taste and see that the Lord is good. Yeah. He he's mm. he's he's imploring them that you gotta you gotta taste this. You gotta you have to have. This personal experience with him all for yourself. Amen. Yeah. And, and, and what he wants them to realize is that if you have this experience, you'll see that it's good. Yeah. You'll see that it's good. And, and he shares with them in this 34th Psalm, he shares with them a few things that he classifies as being good about an experience with God. He, he wants them to know that, look, I, 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 I have something I want you to understand about him that will even be applicable in your own life, and you can experience it with him. So let's, let's see what, what David wants them to understand that is so good about God. The first thing he wants them to understand about God is that God is a refuge. Yes, he is. He, he, mm, thank you, his, as thank David you, is walking with God, thank you, God, he wants them to understand that, look, God is, is a, a, a refuge. Now, you know what a refuge is. A refuge is a place where you can go find shelter, safety, solitude, and security. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what a refuge is. And David declares that God is, is, is so good because God is a place of, of refuge. Mm -hmm. Let's look at it in verse 8 real quick. He says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. David understands this firsthand, and here's why. Here's why. Remember, David is the young up-and-coming king. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? And Saul, who's like the OG of the time, right? He's mm -hmm. he's like the guy 
who is king because Israel wanted a king like everybody else wanted a king. And God told them, look, I'm going to give you what you want. You know what? Y'all want it so bad. Y'all can have it. And he's going to make Israel great again. He's going to, he's going to, y'all want him so bad, y'all can have him. And so, so they have this, they have this king, right? And he hates, they have this king named Saul, and he hates that David has these fresh ideas. Oh, man. So, so, so he begins to discredit David publicly because that's a tactic yeah. of those. Yeah. See, see this whole political thing, I'm going to pause for a second. And, and, and then we'll jump right in. This whole political thing about smear campaigns and stuff like that, that's nothing. That's nothing new. Right. That's a tactic and a trick that if you want to beat your opponent, what you try and do is discredit them. Yeah. And you have people fearful of them so that they'll vote for you. <laughs> okay, okay. So, so, so it's nothing new with what you will begin to see as we move closer and closer toward a, um, an election year. Okay, you'll begin to see it happening because it was something that took place even back in the Bible. Saul has a problem with David because David has these new fresh ideas about leading Israel and, 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 and David comes from David comes from very meager means, so he's not like a rich and famous guy. David was a shepherd guy. He was a shepherd boy, so he watched sheep, and he was, he was in a family of brothers who were um, heads and shoulders taller than him, uh, stronger than him, but yet David was the guy who depended on God. So David is this up and he's this up and coming young guy who is taking over Israel. Saul doesn't have Saul has a problem with it because it's challenging Saul's authority and Saul's power. So Saul wants to kill David. That's where we are. Saul wants to kill David. He wants to take care of David. He tries to discredit him publicly and talk about it, but he also wants to eliminate David and get rid of him. So word on the street is, is that Saul is looking for David and trying to take David out. So David has to run from city to city. He goes to this place called Nob, N-O-B, and he's... He's, he's there and he's hungry and he needs at least a spear or a knife to protect him. But in the city, the king of Nob told him, look, man, the only thing that we can give to you, because word on the street is that Saul is looking for you. We have Goliath's sword that's been in the temple for a while and we'll give that to you and let you have that for protection, but we don't have any food for you. The only food we have for you is the food that has been consecrated by the priest as the showbread food in the temple. We'll let you have some of that. Right. So, so what David is doing is he's going from city to city trying to find a place that will let him lay low. He goes to Gath. Gath, the king of Gath, says the same thing. Hold up, aren't you that dude that Saul's looking for? We can't, no, no, we can't have you around here because Saul is looking for him. And David is like, can I just stay here for a while and find some peace and some solitude and a little bit of safety? And, and the king of Gath says, no, you can't stay around here. So this is what David starts doing. David starts pretending that he's crazy. <laughs> he know he starts to act crazy to see if okay maybe they will see that I'm not that stable and they'll let me stay. The king of Gath said, "No, nah, man, you can't stay. You cannot stay around here." So David is going from place to place to place trying to find refuge. He ends up in a cave in a dullum, and that is where he finds that God has provided an obscure right. place for him, mm. for him to find safety, mm. security, and some rest because he's been on the run. Mm. 
I don't know if you've ever been there before. I'm not talking about running from people, but having situations and circumstances where you can't find no peace at all. You go home and you can't find peace. You go to work and them fools at work messing with you. You're in the neighborhood and can't find peace. Go to the grocery store and somebody has crosswords for you because there's a, sometimes in life where we experience difficulties over and over and no matter where we turn, and we need a place of refuge and my brothers and sisters guess where that place is that place is in God yes yes yes, yes. David wants them to understand mm, thank you God that it's not in your bank account it's not in where you live mm. it's not in what you drive mm. it's in him yes see some of us have, have some of us have experienced enough of the ugliness of life to know that there's only one place of refuge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I may be able to go home and it be quiet, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but you ever been at home where it's quiet but not peaceful? Yes. Mm -hmm. exactly. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. You ever been at home where, yeah, the television's not on, the radio's not on, you can shut the phone, you can be laying in your bed and it is quiet, but there's something going on that's not allowing you to experience peace because there's some life experience or some life circumstance that has you concerned and worrying and thinking about, yeah, am I going to make it? Well, my brothers and sisters, God, David wants us to understand something, that our place of refuge is in God. Yes, thank you, God. Because mm. see, here's the beautiful thing about understanding and knowing that in God I have refuge. Because when I understand that in God I have refuge, all hell could be going on around me and I still be peaceful. Amen. Yeah, yeah, when I understand that he is my refuge, I can be experiencing loss in my life. And yes, that might hurt me, but I understand that the peace I have that surpasses all understanding wasn't given to me by the world and the world can't take it away because I got it in God. Thank you, Lord. David wants, Thank him, you, Lord. wants us to understand that we have refuge in him. He says, taste and see that he's good because you have refuge in him. The next thing David shows them though is that, that not only is, is he worth trying and experiencing because of the refuge, but David says, look, the resources you get when you get connected with him, man, he wants us to understand. Remember, David's on the run. Yeah. David needs resources to protect him from Saul. People have been turning their backs on David. But what David wants them to understand in verses 9 and 10 is that there's some resources that you, that you have access to that no one can do anything about. He says, look, fear the Lord, you his holy people. But check this out, because he says, for those who fear him, Lack nothing. No thing. And, 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 and then look at the example he uses. He said, the lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. He uses the illustration here of the king of the jungle. <coughs> who would ever hear? of the king of the jungle not having something to eat. Because lions, they roar through the jungle. They're stronger. They're aggressive. But yet he says that even the lions in the jungle may grow weak and hungry. But it's something about those who have tasted him. Yeah. There's something about those that are connected to him. He says, those who seek the Lord yeah. will lack no good thing. Yeah. David is desperate for reason. 
resources. He needs resources to help him because Saul is after him. And yet what David finds, catch this, is that he finds the resources he needs in a cave. Listen to how he does this. I went to one king who's full of resources. But he said, no, I'll give you this spear and some bread, but you got to go. I went to another king. He said, no. Even when I acted crazy and mental before him, he said, no, no, you got to go. But yet here he is in a cave created by God. And it's there that he finds what he needs. Because it's there that some others begin to join him. <laughs> See, that's the beautiful thing about God. Yeah. Is that, look, we may think I need this and this and this. Yeah. And God is saying, no, you don't need that. Maybe other people have found some favor in that. Maybe others have, have, have been able to enjoy that. But no, no, what you need, I got, I got it for you. And I'm going to give it to you. And I'm going to allow you to have it. But stop thinking you need what every other people yeah. have. No, I know you because I created you. Yeah. I know the numbers of hairs on your head. I know what you're going to think before yeah. you think it. Yeah. So don't you go thinking you need what yeah. other folk need. Yeah. No, I know what you need. I know the resources you need. I know how much time you need. I know how much money you need. I know how much patience you need. I know what you need. And the resources that you need are in him and not in them. Thank you, God. Yes. See, see, so many of us, sometimes we get hung up on this thing of measuring success by what other people are doing. <laughs> well, look how they drive. <laughs> and if I was driving what they were driving, then I'd be more successful. <laughs> look where they live. If I was living where they're living, then people would see me as more successful. Don't compare success with what other people are doing. Yes, yes. Don't compare your success with what other people are doing. The resources you need mm. are connected to the one who created you. Mm. Thank you, God. And the one cre who created you knows exactly mm. how much you can handle. Mm. Yeah. See, 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 mm. he, mm. he gives the illustration that, 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 listen, that there's no good thing mm. that will be withheld from you yeah. when you're connected to him. Now, here's the part where we struggle. We think we know what's good and not good. Mm. Here we are with our finite minds, and we begin to, to try and measure what we do, with what we deem to be good. And all the while, here's this, this God who is infinite saying, my child, you settling for that, and, and that's not good for you. But these, but this. The resources that David has experienced at the hand of God mm -hmm. is what he wants them to understand. Yeah, yeah. That, listen, he's good because he's a refuge. Yeah. That, yeah, you, you, you want security and safety. You better make sure your security and safety is, is in him. Because yeah. places of business go out of business. <laughs> because some of us some of us have our security wrapped up 
in where we work. Let them go out of business tomorrow. No, no, not even go out of business. Let them begin to think they need to make some adjustments. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Because my security is in him. Not in what I do, what I drive, where I live, how much money I make. But my security is in him. My resources come from him. I just happen to, this just happens to be my place of employment, mm -hmm. but I work for him. Mm -hmm. So last thing, last thing, he, he, he wants him to, he, David wants him to understand <laughs> about God is that not only is he a refuge, and not only are there resources that are available to you by being connected to him, but the last thing he wants him to understand is how reliable God is. Mm -hmm. See, see, David understands yeah. something about God that he wants others to, 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 to understand as well. Is that, look, God is just plain, straight, reliable. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, that, it, yes, that, it that, is. That, that, listen, that, that no matter what's going on, that you can just rely on God. Let's look at it in verses 12 through 15. He said, now whoever of you loves life and desires to see many good days, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from lying. <laughs> but check it out. He says, now turn from evil and do good and seek peace and pursue it. But here he says that the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are attentive to their cry. See, what David wants them to understand is that there's, that when you're connected to God, that when you're walking with him, that when, when, when you walk with God and when you go, when you journey life through life with God, he, he wants you to under, he wants us to understand something that his eyes are watching you, right? And his ears are listening to you. In, in, in other words, in other words, what David wants us to understand is that when I'm living this life with God, that God is watching me, his eyes are on me, so he sees me and he sees where I'm going, he sees the places I should go and the places that I shouldn't go. But not only does he see me, but he also hears me. He hears me when I cry out to him because God understands that there will be situations in my life where I'm going to have to cry out to him and it's important for me to know that he hears me. Yeah, See, yeah. I, I, I have some friends that I know that I can trust, and if I call them, I know I can depend on them. But every now and then, friends get busy, and they might be caught up doing something that they need to do that they can't even answer the phone. I have some family members that have always told me, Squire, if you need anything, don't you ever, 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 ever hesitate to call me and let me know what you need, and I'll be right there for you. But don't you know that sometimes even family members can get caught up in doing family stuff until they're not available at the very moment that you need them. But I've never needed God and been called on God, and God been too busy for me. That's why I love God, because God is a God that you can rely on, and no matter what's going on in your life, I know that when I call him, he hears me. But not only does he hear me, good God Almighty, he sees me while I'm walking, and he knows that if I'm on the right road or the wrong road, here's the beautiful thing, because when I'm on the wrong road, guess what? he saw me, he can nudge me to get on the right road. Or if I'm in the wrong frame of thinking, he knows the thoughts that I have from afar off. He can change my mind in the way that I'm thinking. All because God sees me and God hears me. I don't know about you, my brothers and sisters, but have you ever had a situation in your life where family couldn't solve it, friends couldn't solve it, co-workers Stand 
standing with you, encouraging you, and empowering you. You know you wouldn't even be here today. There's some stuff that you and I have experienced that we should have lost that god dog on mind right now. But thank God Almighty that he loves me, and he watches over me, and he hears me, and he sees me, because God is reliable. Yes, sir. He's reliable. In a courtroom, he'll be a lawyer. And in a hospital room, guess what? As great as physicians are, he is the ultimate physician. You can rely on him. David says, taste and see that he's good. That no matter what you're experiencing, no matter what you're going through, taste and see that he is good. Because he's a refuge. Mm. Yeah. There's some places where you just can't go high. Mm. <laughs> There's some things that you can experience in life that no matter where you go, it's still there with you. Mm. Okay, you ain't never had no situation, right, where you went to bed with it. Mm -hmm. Huh? And you woke up in the morning, yeah. and guess what? It was the first yeah. thing yeah. on your mind. Before you could even come to good consciousness, yeah. it was the first thing on your mind. Yeah. But listen, God is a refuge. Yeah. Yeah. It's not about a geographical location. It's about being in him. That no matter where I am, oh my God, no matter where I am. Yeah. That I'm in a place of refuge with him. Yes, it's going to rain in life. There are going to be difficulties and hardships and heartaches. But he is my refuge. Yes. He's not only my refuge. But he's the source of my resources. See, everything I have comes from him. I agree. And because I'm with him, he doesn't withhold anything from me that's good for me. Yeah, some stuff you might have to wait on because it wasn't good for you at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, I know, and I know we don't like that, present company included. I darn sure don't like it. Hold on, fam. Read. But you know what? When you begin to get closer to him, yeah. You can understand <laughs> why. But lastly, he's so reliable. Yeah. Look, you can depend on God. With family and friends, what's the, the passage the psalmist wrote when thy father and mother forsake you? Guess who you can depend on? Yeah. He'll be right there. And for many of us, there's no one closer than my Lord Dad. All right, man. But he says, look, and even if they turn their back on you, I'll be a father to the fatherless and a mother to the motherless. Oh, yeah. Because that's how much we can depend on him. If you haven't tried him, if you haven't tasted and seen for yourself, my brother, my sister, I encourage you. I beg you to try him. If we could just rest on our feet for a moment. I beg you to give him your life, give him your heart, and taste and see.